I got sick enough to realize that if I continue to let myself down, I would literally, it would be a line for me to rip a hundred dollar bill in half. I'm in pain because I'm letting myself down every single day, but yet I keep doing it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take something that's more painful than getting up in the morning and going to the gym and, and stack it up against that. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode, number 1,149. What's your one word, and why does it matter? It was last week's, last week's live podcast, excuse me. Today, for episode number 1,150, put your money where your mouth is. So, first of all, happy Wednesday. Second of all, if you're watching on YouTube, I got a haircut. If you're not watching on YouTube, you have no idea that my hair was just out of control and I've been living in a hat. It's nice to air it out. I, as you know, I was struggling a little bit to get my morning routine down where for a while I was crushing it. Alan and I did the 10 pound in 10 week thing. We were crushing it. I was at the gym six days a week. Awesome. Then I went through a little bit of a bout where business picked up a lot and I was really struggling to keep up with everything and something fell and that happened to be the gym. And I was just kind of getting, I don't want to say frustrated with myself, but that's probably the best way to put it where I would wake up in the morning and I would already be off to a negative start. I would already feel bad. I would already feel behind. I already felt like I let myself down. So I said, all right, I really need to buckle down and I need to get this taken care of. I've gotten to the point where I'm capable of sustaining everything we're doing, me going on a, a lot of other podcasts. Cool. I'm good with that. Let me lock this back up. Let me get back into the groove. So I did what I do best. And I'll say this. I dug into, okay, based on what I know about myself, what is one surefire way that I can make sure I stay consistent in the gym? So I went to Taryn and I's safe and I pulled out a crisp $100 bill. And I showed this recently. Uh, I think I was talking about the reviews. But I, this is what I said to Taryn. I said, hey, are you willing to help me be more consistent? And she looked at me puzzled and said, uh, yeah, I think. And I said, cool. I said, all right, so this is what I need you to do. No biggie. Don't even worry about it. This isn't even going to matter because I'm going to take care of it. But I said, I'm going to give you this $100 bill that I took from our money. And if I don't go to the gym five days this, this week, five days in a row is what I said. I want you to take it and I want you to, to rip it in half. And she's like, Kev, I'm not going to rip that in half. And I said, Taryn, I won't miss, I promise. I said, you know how I am. I will not miss. Can you do that for me? And it took some convincing too, honestly. I'm not saying she didn't have faith in the kid. I completely understand. I mean, if I just decide I don't want to do it, that's $100 down. $100 is a lot of money. And she said, eventually she got to the point where she said, yes, I will support you in this. If you don't go to the gym, I will rip that up, but I will be very angry at you. And I said, same. I will be angry at myself as well. <laughs> and I ended up going to the gym five days in a row, I did my mobility. And here's the thing. It's not just about the gym. It's about the fact that I go to the gym that's 15 minutes away so I can listen to an audiobook on the way. I listen to an audiobook while I'm doing my mobility and I get my 30 minutes of learning out of the way. On the way home, I listen to our podcast. So when I sit down at my desk at 6.30 or 7 or 6, depending on what day it is, probably usually 6.30, I have already weighed myself. I have already learned for 30 minutes. I've already listened to NLU. I've already exercised and I've done 15 minutes of mobility. I am off to a rocket start. It's not just about the gym. It's about everything else that isn't getting done. So the, the reason we made this episode what we made it is I think this will work for everybody. And we've talked about this before. We talked about the commitment device that Alan has used with clients and that's really where I got this. But I got sick enough to realize that if I continue to let myself down, I would literally, it would be a line for me to rip a $100 bill in half. It would be more a line for me to do that or for Taryn to do that for me than for me to keep drop, dropping the ball on my goals. And it worked. And you can do that in some way, shape, or form. Again, maybe you're not at the point where you're going to do that with $100. That's fine. Five bucks, a dollar. Wasting a dollar is not smart. Five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever. Whatever it may be for you. Or... I remember Alan said this. He said, if you really want to be consistent with something and you want to stay committed, have an agreement with yourself or somebody else that if you don't do what you say you're going to do, they're going to donate X amount of dollars of yours to something that you are 
extremely against. That's another way to do it too if you don't want to. I think it's illegal to rip up money, so don't do that because then you can say I told you to do it. So don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Kev, well, I want to read something that is a commitment device that I did with a client because the truth of the matter is, and I talk about this in book club all the time because we're reading a book called Switch, which is about how to change your behavior. And on this podcast, you hear us talk about this all the time. It's really easy to tell yourself a new story. I'll go on Monday or I'll eventually get to that. But changing behavior is really difficult. Really, really, really difficult. And I don't know why people, well, I guess I do. People make it sound easier than it is because it's easy to talk about. It's really easy to talk about exercising every day. It's really easy to talk about tracking habits. Talk is cheap. It really is easy to talk about. Uh, doing it every single day is infinitely more difficult. So I just surpassed 250 days in a row, uh, 251 as of last night of exercise. And it's like, how, how am I doing that? And on top of everything that else, else that I'm doing, it's been, it's been ridiculously humbling. And I think that what I want to get the best at is helping people change their behavior. I really, really do. I, and, and also changing my own behavior. And I told Kevin earlier, I said, you're really good at changing your behavior. Whenever I give you tough feedback, you very quickly change. We had a conversation three weeks ago about finances <laughs> that was really uncomfortable, particularly for you, Kev, because you were spending more than I was. <laughs> and it's our me? money, right? No. <laughs> yeah, me? No, of course not. And, you know... That's our business money. So we want to reinvest a portion of that in the business, obviously into our lifestyles, all that. And you changed very quickly. You do. You change very fast. Whenever there's pain, you change very fast. And so no pain, no gain type of thing here. And that is the truth. That's what Kevin essentially did. He said, okay, I'm in pain because I'm letting myself down every single day. But yet I keep doing it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take something that's more painful than getting up in the morning and going to the gym and, and stack it up against that. This is what we call necessity. So you go to your wife, Taryn, and you say, hey, this is our money, and I want you to rip it up if I don't go to the gym five days. And not only is it the 100 bucks, but now she's going to be mad. And that's an additional pain. You don't want to disappoint her. Yeah. And, and it's important to get that leverage on yourself. So I guess my question for you before I read this commitment device is, why, did, why couldn't you do it before? And, and I think it's really, it shows humility to do something like that, Kev. Because most people's egos would just be like, oh, I don't need to do that. I'll just go to the gym. Yeah, okay. Mm. Right? That's like, I had someone tell me recently, oh, I could go to the gym 250 days in a row if I wanted to. No, you couldn't. Go three. And then start talking. Like, what do you, have you, I said, okay, what's the longest you've ever gone? They're like, ah, oh, I don't know, maybe like a week. No, you couldn't. Hmm. And, and by the way, maybe you could go, sh go prove it. Show me, right? It's not easy. I don't know what this person was thinking, right? So that's what I want to ask you is, first of all, why, why did you get this leverage on yourself? Where does that level of humility come from? And then how do we help people live in the reality of like changing behavior is really difficult. There's a reason most of us overeat and underexercise and, you know, don't save for retirement. Like, you know, it's not, it's not an easy thing. So yeah, go, let's go into that. I appreciate the compliments very much. It's a battle that you're, you're fighting yourself is a lot harder to win because nobody knows. I think that's kind of, I think that's really it at the deepest level is if if the necessity isn't high enough, there's no downside to doing it. It just doesn't matter. It's like, oh, I'll just go to the gym tomorrow. I mean, yeah, the downside is you let yourself down and maybe that hurts your self-worth. It's very hard to understand if that's happening in the moment and it's also very hard to measure that. I think that's what it is, is I need very specific measurements to determine whether or not I'm winning. I need very specific feedback. Me saying, well, I, I don't feel good about myself is a level of pain, but it's not, it's not the right level of pain. It's not enough. 
It's not enough. It's just not enough. I think that's really it for me is I realize, again, it's not even about the money. It's not even about the $100, really. It is. But this this isn't, and I don't mean this in any, and Alan will, Alan will say differently, but like this isn't that much money. Where if, if we rip this up, I would be like, oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm going to do. Fold, I wouldn't even notice, honestly. It wouldn't, I wouldn't notice. It's more the fact that, number one, letting Taryn down. Absolutely, mm-hmm. that's huge. Yeah, that's that's the huge. big part. Yeah. Number two, and this is this is different. Having to identify as I made a concrete commitment and I failed, versus I had an internal commitment that nobody else knew about. That's huge for me. That's huge for me. I don't like failing when other people know. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's probably. That's- human being yeah that's a yeah, human I don't... tendency some more than others but i think that yeah the and fact that you're willing that. to admit that i think every i'm my goal i'm realizing this too my goal is just to admit what everybody else fears and feels but isn't willing to admit i said that on a podcast recently for those who don't know i dealt with and i also i still deal with porn addiction in some way shape or form instagram and tiktok tiktok are basically i mean that's a rabbit hole but i said this on a podcast recently and i said what's going to happen Somebody's going to reach out to me and say, wow, you really suck for being addicted to porn. It's like, you realize like 90, I don't know the percentage, but the vast majority of human beings, especially I would say men, are probably addicted to it. You're just going to reach out to me and say, I suck because I admitted it. Like, okay, whatever. That's probably more of a reflection of you than it is of me. At least I'm trying to, I'm trying to get better. I'm, I'm working on it consciously. And I've been very, very successful, so I'm grateful. But to, yeah, to your point. How long? <sighs> Three I don't years? Know. No, I don't think it's been that long. I think I've definitely like had moments, not like it used to be, but there's been moments where I've gotten curious online for sure. Yeah. No, not three years. Not three years. But it's never been like it used to be either. So and I won't go into you don't want to know the full details, I'm sure, if you're listening. So I won't <laughs> I won't go into the full details. But yeah. Probably I don't know. It's probably been like a year. I would say. It's pretty um, huge though. I mean, what's that percentage of men yeah. with over a year without you know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. know that I've recently, you know, I'm coming up on, I'm over a year now. I know that. I remember and our talks. Yeah, man. That's why yeah. you inspired me. Well, I appreciate and it was that. like, oh, I never considered it a huge issue, but like, that's what inspired all that of like, oh, you know what? Honestly, I want to get rid of that. And one of the team members too. Well, we were doing I- a, a peak performance assessment on the coaching call and one of the things on the peak performance assessment for, for those of you who are curious about my coaching, it's a give up list mm. persons, places, things, and ideas and, and places is ge- geographically, 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 and there's an inside joke for the new listeners early on. We used to say that in the intro. Yeah. Go back and listen to the intro. You'll know, why. <laughs> uh, geographical places, but also, um, virtual places. In other words, what's Snapchat, like get rid of Snapchat or TikTok or whatever. And this person who I'm referring to right now, anonymously put porn, Mm. like I'm giving it up, done. And I went to send the peak performance assessment to get a digital asset created because it's going to become a thing I do to the team. And I was like, do you mind if I send this to the team? And he's like, no, it's all good. Very brave. I'm not going to, I have nothing to hide. Like, you know, I'm trying to be better. And well, I remember you and I had a buddy that we were talking with back in the day and we all were talking about that. We were all talking about, so even to the, to the original point. When something, when something goes from in your mind to in real life, in reality, it, it's yeah. a commitment. It's verbal. It's, it's a thought that is shared between you and another human. It becomes more real. Yeah. It and just it becomes, becomes more real. Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda. I am a dental hygienist and a mom of two teenagers. I was first introduced to Kevin and Alan about three years ago. So that led me to book a consultation with Alan and I showed up to that call in the lowest spot that I have been at in my entire life. He is a good human that genuinely wants the best in your life, your future, your love, your relationships, your wealth, and you have the chance to be in the same room or on the same call or have these two in your life in any way, then you are blessed. You, the pain associated with letting someone else down as well as yourself and being a hypocrite, you know, it's really it's really powerful. So I'll read this. I think this is 
super powerful. One of my clients, I'll read it anonymously. So many of my clients have done commitment devices. I've done this uh, many different times. I stopped doing the donate to the charity mm. that is again because Emilia helped me realize that I don't want to put money towards anything negative in this world. I think that's outside of alignment for me. So I no longer do that anymore. But what I do do is this. Do you do do. <laughs> what what <laughs> I do do is this. Classic. Okay. So anonymous 90 day commitment contract. And I've done this with several clients, usually around exercise. Cause at the end of the day, that's the thing. None of us, everyone struggles with everyone, including me. I'm 251 days in a row. And I'm telling you, I'm going for a walk tonight with Tucker 30 minute walk, right? It's, it's still a challenge. Okay. Uh, I'll just use Jane Doe. So I'll use Jane. Jane Doe is the, the name here. Okay. This contract is between Alan Lazarus and Jane Doe. Jane has promised me, Alan Lazarus, that she will exercise at least 30 minutes per day for the next 90 days and will send me an accountability picture to prove it. In this context, exercise can include walking, jogging, running, or weight training, but it must be a type of exercise slash movement that is consistent and does not include steady state poses like yoga or stretching. It must require consistent movement to maximize calories burned. She will send me an accountability picture via WhatsApp once per day showing that she has kept her promise to me and to herself. If she does not fulfill this contract every day for the next 90 days, she will forfeit the $1,000 that she has given me in advance to hold herself accountable. No matter how guilty I, Alan Lazarus, feel about quote-unquote taking her money, I am not to give in. I am to take the money no matter what and not feel bad about it. If Jane Doe breaks this contract, that is Jane Doe's responsibility, not Alan's. This contract started on October 6th, 2022 and ends on January 4th, 2023. And that's just one example. And we sign it digitally and send it back and forth from each other. And I've done that with several different clients. And it's just a really, really powerful commitment device that gets you to stay true to your word. And I, I often tell the story about Kevin and I with the 10 pounds in 10 weeks. Yeah. And one of us was going to, for those of you who are new, one of us was going to skip an episode. Imagine doing 1150 episodes in a row and then missing one and then me having to know that Kevin kept his word and I didn't. I ended up doing a marathon dehydrated to make weight, <laughs> which again, you yeah. can consider it cheating if you want to, but I weighed in at 190 or one, what was it? 187 or something like oh, that? No, what no, was your, 179. What was your 179. Yeah, 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 179. Yeah. So I was 180. He was 170. He weighed in at 169. I weighed in at 179. And I have the picture to prove it. And that was brutal and fairly reckless. But my point is, is that I was not going to be a hypocrite. I was not going to let Kevin down. I was not going to let myself down. I was not going to let all of our listeners down. And so three days or four days before the marathon, I decided, holy crap, I'm way behind. I can't miss an episode. I'll do anything not to miss an episode. That's who we are. We're, we're consistent. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life knowing I missed. No. So I did whatever I could, whatever it took. And it was horrible. It was genuinely horrible. But uh, I did. I made weight. And after that, I ate. Dude, we ate. We got pizza. We got chicken. It was great. We got fries. It was, it was awesome. But anyways, the point is, is that you got to put your back against the wall. I think people want to believe that aspiration is enough, and it's not. What I will say is that if you add aspiration with necessity, it can be enough. And there's this cognitive bias that all of us have in our mind where we will do way more to protect $1,000 we already have than to go make a thousand dollars. I mean, think about it, right? Kev, how hard would it be? How much, how hard would it be for you to go and make an additional hundred dollars? It's not me. that hard. Yeah. But yet you'll do anything not to rip that thing up. Mm. And that's just human nature. We, we, we are designed evolutionarily to hold on to what we do have and protect it with all our might. So you doing something like this, it, it really can show you what you're actually capable of when your back's up against the wall. When when your back's up against the wall, you'll surprise yourself what you're capable of, just like me with that marathon. There's actually, I saw a commercial for this and I was like, wow, that is so interesting. 
I don't know if it's an app or if it's a website or what it is, but there's actually, I'll just say it's an app where, and I don't know exactly, well, I can actually understand it now from a business perspective, but what you do is I think you, say for instance in this analogy, you take $100 and you give it to this app. If you lose the amount of weight you say you're going to lose in the allotted amount of time, you get like 150 bucks. You get your money back plus 50, whatever, whatever the numbers are. Why? Why does that work? Because you are literally. And also, how do they know? How do they know you're not that I don't number? know. It's it's a smart scale, maybe or something. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Cool. I'm not really cool sure. Cool concept, but there's you know how they be make a... money because the vast majority yeah, of, of people end up end up Jeffing. So the yep. the the rates there, unfortunately. But think, okay, that's a great that's a great way to think about it. If I reached out to you and you're watching this, you're listening to this, and you have this goal in mind, I wish, I, I want to stop smoking cigarettes, I want to stop drinking, I want to stop watching porn, I want to stop eating fast food, skipping workouts, sleeping, and whatever. All right, give me $5, and then if you, if you miss, you don't get it back. No, that doesn't do it. All right, cool, 10 bucks. Give me 10 bucks. No, nah, that doesn't do it either. Okay, 15. No, nah, that doesn't do it either. Okay, 20. What's the number? What's your number? What's the number that would change the behavior or not necessarily the number what's the insert what is the leverage that you must have over yourself you ever heard of blackmail what do you think blackmail is it's somebody saying hey i have not so flattering pictures of you i need you to do blank or i'm going to release them to the public not saying do that don't do that but it's the same idea the idea is i have more pain and discomfort long term associated with failure than I do short term. That that's really mm -hmm. what it is. I I don't want to fail Taryn because what does that mean in a year? Is she going to remember that? Is she going to remember the fact that I didn't go to the gym and she had to rip up is that going to affect us when we go to buy a house and I say babe I got this trust me. Is that going to affect our relationship? There's so many layers under that. Again, it wasn't necessarily about the money, but that was a good that was a good measure. And I know we've talked about this so often. We talk about necessity a lot. We talk about accountability. This is a human thing. I had a conversation with somebody recently, a very high achiever, and I know this person well. This person does really well with necessity, and I've said that to this person many times. If the pressure's not great enough, you don't perform because you, know, you don't have to. It's just not that big of a deal. You're not really worried about it. I do believe there's a level of, of stress and pressure as long as it's within the right amount, that's going to make you do things that you wouldn't necessarily do. Now, again, you can definitely overdo that, but you can also underdo that. And if you're underdoing it, you got to figure out where your unique version of five is. The reason this person chose a thousand is because it was uncomfortable. Yeah. It has to be an amount that makes you uncomfortable. That's the part about growth that I'm writing an article on this right now. If where can you the, aren't where can the willing. People hey, where can the people find this article? The articles, my LinkedIn. Yeah, nice. The uh, Christina created digital assets for Shout all of Christina. the thumbnails. They're so good, man. Yeah, really good. My LinkedIn. Uh, the link will be in the show notes to all of my articles. Uh, read the recent ones. <laughs> not, maybe, maybe not the old ones. The Powerball mentality. Called, yeah, the power, the old Powerball <laughs> mentality. <laughs> Rip up your scratch tickets and and your hundred dollar bills. I'm joking. All right, so. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. yeah no, it has I, to be uncomfortable. Bad. Bad. It has, it's supposed to be uncomfortable. And the article I'm writing right now is called Micro Failure for Macro Success. And it's all about how discomfort in the moment is actually good for your growth as long as it's the right amount. And that's what this was. A hundred bucks might not have done it for her. We actually agreed on a thousand and that made me uncomfortable. And so just, just whatever it is, the amount has to be uncomfortable. That's all I'll say. And the discomfort of not taking action needs to be greater than the discomfort of taking action. That's all Kevin did. The discomfort of not taking action and losing the $100 and losing the way Taryn looks up to him in some ways is greater than the discomfort of just getting your butt up. Yeah. And now there's, now there's proof of concept where how do you take that and put that over the course of a month? How do you take that and put that over really what should happen and I'll get to this point. I just don't know if it's every time, time you miss the gym, another percent equity comes to the kid. <laughs> <laughs> I would never miss the gym if it was up to that. I, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose my my majority stake in the business. That would do it. Let's do it. Let's sign a contract right after that's, this. John that's, Doe and that's going to be a lot Doe. more yeah. than if if it was five years ago. That quite literally would have been nothing. It would have been well, you can have whatever percentage you want. In ten, fifteen, <laughs> twenty years, that's going to matter a lot. 
Mm -hmm. Ideally, this is, I guess, in theory and practice, this would probably be the best thing. I will work out, it's a reverse engineer, 52 weeks, five days a week. What's that? 260 days? Five times five yeah. is 25. 260 days. So I will work out at least 260 days out of the next 365, but the number would have to be bigger. That's the interesting thing is when you play it out, just like yeah. with your client, three months is a long time. A thousand yeah. bucks. But if that was 365 days, it's like, mm, I don't know. You might have to bump yeah, just that up give a the little foul. bit. Give the foul. You yeah. might have to bump it up. You might have to bump that up to 3,000 or 5,000. Again, we're playing with different numbers. I understand for most people, you're not going to be risking $5,000. Don't do that. But whatever that means to you, I think that's a good place. So for me, what was the was gym that do... made you pay to leave? What's that? What was the gym that made you pay to quit? <laughs> I won't name them publicly, but it was a gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what they were doing. They were trying yeah. to get you to comply and stay yeah, You want to test term. me? Watch me go. Zappos does the opposite. Mm. They train you for a couple weeks and then they pay you to leave. Interesting. Because they want to they want to see how committed you are to staying at Zappos. It's fascinating psychology. It's really quite quite awesome what they do there. <laughs> Kev's like, I would have taken the three grand. I'm out. <laughs> Thank I might you. have. No, no, I'm kidding. I might have. But, I've quit everything else. Well, except for NLU. Well, can't quit that. Of, of course, of course. I use my baby. Anything else? That just that's the last point. Is yes, that was five days. If I was going to do the rest of the or. 300 the next 365 days that would probably have to change just think of that the leverage has to be higher than the discomfort that's it that's this episode in a nutshell i know we've done this before but since this money works really well for me i figured i'd throw it out there if you have a very supportive partner or if you have a very supportive parent who you can sit down with i think i have to sneeze no who you can sit down with and say hey i would you like to help me accomplish my goals or would you like to help me accomplish this goal if they're willing to do it cool you're in and whatever that amount of money is or whatever that means, if I do it, I will let myself buy something, whatever. Just create some sort of necessity. Just create some sort of necessity. That, that is what I would say. And if you need a peak performance partner, someone just posted in Next Level Nation today yes. for an accountability partner. Accountability, yes. peak performance, whatever you want to label it. Uh, if you need one, post in Next Level Nation do and uh, someone is there looking for a peak performance partner, literally. And today. sign up. If you sign up for our app, you'll be able to see your peak performance partner's habits and you can, it, it really is important. I said this to one of my buddies recently. I said, hey, if you need help, let, just let me know. We can do, I can send you my stuff at the end of the day. It's not that big of a deal. I'm going to do it anyway because I'm, I have, already have so much accountability with the team. But if you need a little bit what of extra say? accountability, I don't remember. I was, I, there was, I was drinking. I, there was some drinks. <laughs> so It would help him so much to see that mirror of all that you're doing. Yeah. We'll see. Sounds I'll good. Shoot, I'll shoot a reminder. Send him a report. Send him a report. Okay. What do you think? Maybe I'll do it tonight. That would be fire. That would be fire. Next level nation. If you are looking for a peak performance partner, join our private Facebook group, Next Level Nation. And honestly, be just be courageous and say, hey, look, I'm looking for some accountability. I'm looking for some extra necessity. I'm looking for some support. At the end of the day, everybody wants to be more accountable. Of course. Everybody. And, myself and everyone needs accountability. It's it's really uh, I know that a lot of people have shame around admitting that that that's not in the next level nation. It's a good thing when you say, "Hey, I want more accountability." I think there's something there's something to be said. I think people are afraid to admit, like, "Oh, I can't do it alone." Hmm. That's like a thing, you know. I should be able to do it on my own. Nobody, nobody, you know, is able to. Everyone struggles to exercise consistently without without friends. I had a client once. I know we'll go. I had a client once, dollar in the jar. Yep. I had a client once who I asked him about fitness and like why he doesn't exercise consistently because he was trying to and he, he couldn't seem to get in the habit. And I was like, okay, was there ever a time in your life when you did? He's like, yeah, but I lived with all personal trainers. Mm. I was like, oh yeah, no. that." He's like, yeah, back in college, all my roommates were personal trainers. I could not go to the gym. And he was just transparent about it. It wasn't him right? That's arrogant. You live with all personal trainers. Trust me, you'd be consistent too. When I was a fitness model, fitness coach, fitness competitor, all my whole life was fitness. All my friends were working out. Everybody's every, it was an echo chamber, right? So it's super important. Okay. Speaking of accountability, peak performance partners, book club is a perfect place. If you want more accountability to stay reading, I read this book every single week because I have to prepare for book club. One of my favorite parts of book club is that it keeps me reading. 
So if you want to join Book Club, the link will be in the show notes, and I hope to see you there. Also, shout out to our Canadian listeners. Alan and I were, I think we were the 190, I don't know, we were in the top 200 today for self-improvement in the entire space of Canada, which is pretty wonderful. It's pretty wonderful. So I want to give a shout out. I want to give a little bit of shout out. Also, last thing before we go, shout out to Bobby Joe. We have an amazing listener named Bobby Joe. We're actually flying out to Wisconsin next week. So if you're listening to this, we'll actually be in Wisconsin a week from today. And we're giving a speech to 1,100 students and 90 staff members, I think. So shout out to Bobby Joe. Again, we have the best community in the world. If you want us to come speak to somebody that you know, a school, company, whatever it may be, we would be happy to do it. And again, thank you to Bobby Joe. Next Level Nation, as always, we love you. We are grateful. We are appreciative of each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Please reach out.